welcome to another video. Today has followed a very similar pattern to the last few. I didn't sleep great last night. Not terrible, as in not getting to sleep until midnight and then waking up at 4 or 5 a.m. But not great, as in what I was used to sleeping before I stopped taking metazapine. When I wake up, I feel ridiculously nauseous. I force down some breakfast so I can take my medication. I then feel even more sick and spend the next three or four hours desperately trying not to throw up. And then at sort of around 12, I start to feel slightly better. My nausea is in no way gone, but it is bearable. And by sort of two, I'm able to eat some lunch. Not a whole lot, but it's something, so that's good. And then the afternoon, I sort of feel okay still. In the evening, I'm able to eat some dinner and then I go to sleep and it starts all over again. I'm starting to just get a little worried because obviously I had to cancel an appointment I had last week because I just wasn't up to leaving the house. And I've got an appointment next Thursday that I really can't rearrange because in a couple of weeks I'm going to be going to Breakspear for more IV antibiotics and I really need to get this appointment and a few others done before I leave. I just have to cross that bridge when I come to it I guess. So in my continuing effort to try and find something to help my nausea. Today, I didn't take alpha lipoic acid, and this is the oral version of the thioctic acid that I had as part of the detox cocktail when I was at Breakspear having the IV antibiotics. And as is well documented, that cocktail made me feel very, very sick. I thought, oh well, the alpha lipoic acid probably isn't helping things. I was like, I'm just gonna not take it and see if it, you know, makes any difference and it has made a difference. My nausea is by no means gone, but it is not unbearable. I'm not sitting in the bathroom, like willing myself not to vomit. Um, sorry if that's TMI. So that's good in the fact that hopefully that will kind of help my overall level of nausea go down. But obviously that's not a long-term solution because I need to take this because it helps my liver detox and as we all know my liver doesn't seem to be very good at that so when I go back to Breakspear in a few weeks to have more IVs I'm going to need to take it then because I want to try and avoid having the IV cocktail I want to try and manage it orally as much as I can I still can't decide whether I should go to my GP and try and persuade them to give me an antiemetic it's getting to the point now where I think I'm going to have to do that but I really don't want to take more prescription medication I don't know I don't know so I'm just watching a video of someone who I follow on Instagram. She is also documenting her treatment for Lyme disease. She is getting treatment in the USA. And so she has had to fly out to the USA, which, I mean, I'm in awe of her strength that she managed to do that. And then she stayed there for about a month and then came back home. And this is the video she did about her journey home. And honestly, it's so heartbreaking it just hits home because the emotions that she's feeling, you know, I felt when I was having my month of treatment, a feeling of honestly not thinking you can go on, just thinking it's impossible to get up and go to clinic that day. But you do it. You have to, as she said in the video, dig deep and just find a way to do it. You just have to keep going. And that is such a hard thing to do. And I am in awe of anyone who does that. Yeah, it's been really nice to kind of, well nice is an odd word, but it has been nice to see someone else's journey and to recognise that you are not alone in what you're going through. So yeah, it's been really great to see someone else's videos going through the same thing as me. So one of the hardest times of day for me at the moment is sort of between 10 and 12. That's when my nausea seems to be at its peak. And unfortunately, that is the time of day that I'm supposed to take my medication. Um, and I've talked about this before, it's a powder called niastatin and you mix it with water and then you drink it. It tastes vile. Even when I didn't have really bad nausea, it was making me feel sick after I drank it because it's just the most disgusting thing. And I'm supposed to take two doses a day, so I take one in the morning and one in the evening. But because my nausea has been so bad over the past few weeks, I've been skipping a lot of doses in the morning because I thought that this nausea would be a short-term thing and when it sort of got less or went away then I'd be able to kind of um, go back to my normal dosage. Obviously it hasn't gone away yet and it was starting to get to the point where I was feeling a bit uncomfortable with how many doses I was missing. So last night I was like right 
tomorrow morning, I'm going to take it, whatever happens, I'm just going to do it. And when I woke up this morning and felt really sick, I was like, oh no, like, what am I going to do? And then I was like, no, I'm just going to do it. I am just going to do it. So I did it. And it was horrible. And I thought it was just going to come back up straight away, but it didn't. I was strong and I did it. And I'm very pleased with myself. And I really have to psych myself up to take this medication. And the way I did that today, and most days I should say, is with the Hamilton soundtrack. Specifically, um, the first song or the third song. And I don't know what it is about that soundtrack. I mean, everyone knows it's incredible. That's a given. I don't know what it is about it that just kind of makes me feel like I can do anything. Makes me feel like, you know, yeah, I can handle whatever's thrown at me. And actually when I was at Breakspeare before Christmas, those sort of middle two weeks that were the hardest two weeks of my entire life, I didn't really have the energy to talk at all when I was at the hospital or sort of going to and from the hospital. I was literally just concentrating on staying conscious, basically. And I would literally be sitting in the car and I would have that soundtrack in my ears and I would literally just be silently crying because it makes me kind of emotional to remember it because... It was just the hardest thing I'd ever done. And I was like, I don't know how I'm doing this. I don't know how I'm gonna get up tomorrow. I don't know how I'm gonna continue for the kind of the rest of the days I'm here. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. And I just had that soundtrack in my ears and that song, specifically the first one, would just give me the strength to carry on. It would give me the strength to do what I needed to do to hopefully get better. I just thought I should tell you that because it's been very important to me over the last few months. Well, I didn't wake up at 6am today. I woke up at 5am. <laughs> I have a hospital appointment at 4pm today. Honestly don't know whether I'm going to be able to make it. I mean, usually my nausea does get better in the afternoon, but that doesn't take away from the fact that I got very, very little sleep last night. I'm going to wait and see how I feel for the next few hours before I decide. I mean, I would really like to go and just get it over and done with. So, I've decided to go. And as you can probably tell, it's going to be my first time wearing a mask to a hospital appointment. And I'm going to take it off because it's bloody uncomfortable. But I just wanted to prove that I am going to do it because... I've had boxes of face masks for a few months now and I've had doctors and hospital appointments but I've just never been brave enough to take the plunge and do it and I'm still really nervous because I'm going to be in a wheelchair and someone's going to be pushing me anyway and to draw attention to yourself even more by wearing a face mask is something that does make me kind of uncomfortable but I know that is the right thing to do. On the physical side, I'm feeling dire. I just... I hope so much that I don't have to wait very long. I'm going to be taking inspiration from the fry life again. Do what you think you can't do. And I don't think I can do this, but I'm going to blooming well do it anyway. Using my blue badge for the very first time. Phew! I did it. I have no idea how I managed it, but that doesn't matter because I did. I must admit, it was greatly helped by the fact that I only had to wait about 10 minutes and that was because we were really early. <laughs> did wear the mask, very, very proud of myself for doing that. Got a few funny looks, but don't really care. One thing actually that I really struggled with was that I couldn't wear my glasses with the mask. My breath would fog up the glasses by like coming out underneath the mask. And that was really inconvenient because I couldn't see with the glasses on and if I take them off I can't see anything either. So it was quite tricky. So that's something I'm going to have to try and figure out I think because yeah I, I need to wear both at the same time somehow. If anyone has any tips I'd really like to hear them. I'm hurting all over now. So much pain and my god I'm so tired. Have I left my bed today? No I have not. <laughs> Some days that really bothers me, other days it doesn't at all. And when it doesn't bother me, I know I had no other choice but to stay in bed all day. It's um, similar to the feeling of not being bored when you're ill because you feel too ill. And then when you feel bored, 
you're like, oh, I must be feeling a bit better. I really need to make an appointment with my GP to talk about the blood test results I had done a few weeks ago and then the results of the scan I had yesterday. And my mum has been calling up and calling up and trying to get an appointment for the last week and we haven't been able to get one for me because there's just no appointments available. And, you know, it just makes me so frustrated because I need an appointment. I can't have an appointment because... Our health service is being run into the ground. It's critically underfunded. I mean, it does kind of feel like the end of days in terms of the National Health Service. And I just, I hope to God that that's not true. A few years ago, I was lucky enough to get tickets to the Monty Python reunion that happened in London. And the tickets sold out in 45 seconds. And God knows how I managed to get any, but I did, I got two. And honest to God, it was easier to get those tickets than it is to get a GP appointment at the moment. And on that slightly depressing note, I'm going to go to bed now. I hope I sleep well. But to be honest, I have no idea if I will. I'm going to break one of my rules now. I'm going to have a banana. I'm not supposed to have any fruit that has a high concentration of fructose in. So it's technically not allowed, but I haven't been eating properly for the last three weeks. I haven't eaten any lunch I barely ate any breakfast today so I just I really want to eat something and you know bananas are good for you they've got potassium and nutrients they fill you up so it's just I just need something um, and believe it or not this is only the second time I've broken my dietary rules since I started it in June of last year which I don't think is too bad going at all really hopefully <sighs> This banana goes down okay and doesn't make me want to throw up. So the last two days have just been utterly miserable. They really, really have. It's getting to the point now where I need to make a decision about whether or not I'm going to go to Breakspear in less than two weeks. My parents have already booked time off work to come with me. They've booked accommodation, so they've sort of paid money. And so I've got that kind of lurking feeling in the back of my head you should do it you need to do it because you know people have paid money people are expecting you to go I have to make decisions but that decision is based upon that decision which is based upon that decision which is based upon this happening which is based upon if this happens and so I don't know what to do because there's no clear place to kind of start if that makes sense I feel like all the decisions are wrapped up together as though they're like cogs in a machine. I need to make a firm decision and turn that cog and the rest will start moving and it will get easier, but I don't know which one to start with. I booked my endocrinology appointment today on the NHS. 10th of May was the first one they had. 10th of May. I mean, that's what, just under three months away? I need it now. <laughs> I need to have that appointment now because that appointment could solve so many problems if I understood the diabetes I need to get a GP appointment but I have to wait until at least Thursday to ring up to get an appointment for the next Monday that would be great if I can get an appointment for next Monday but that only leaves me four days then before I have to leave for Breakspear and in those four days I'm supposed to be having a dentist appointment and a diabetic eye test what am I supposed to do with those appointments should I move them now or should I wait and see what happens with the GP appointment if I move them now when do I make them for because if I make them for after I'm supposed to come back, what if this is then delayed and I then have to remake them again? It's just never ending. It is never ending the amount of complicated decisions I have to make. I have no idea what I'm going to do. Okay, so quite a lot has happened since the last time I filmed anything. I had a really, really good long talk with my parents about how I was feeling about going away for more IV antibiotics and how I just felt that it was an impossible task and that actually I felt like they would do more harm than good. So we decided to cancel because I just don't feel strong enough. Last time they pushed me to my absolute limit and I was better then than I am now. Although I don't feel better physically now than I did a few days ago, mentally I feel a lot better. Honest to God, the last week or so has been one of the most stressful times of my entire illness. Really, really has. It was horrible. I've got a phone appointment with my doctor at Breakspear for next Monday 
to just kind of talk through what's going on um, because I think I kind of want to take a break from antibiotics at least until the nausea and the insomnia has calmed down whether that involves just waiting out the metazapine withdrawal or whether that involves more medication to combat those symptoms. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss the options of a herbal protocol because I know that that's gentler on your system. I think it's just time to kind of try something different because although I did make progress on antibiotics, it was very small and I feel like I've lost all that progress now with this metazapine withdrawal. So I just, I need to take a break. Today marks the end of another two weeks, the end of another video. It's really hard to believe because I feel like the last two weeks have just been one big exhausted blur. But I survived and that's the main thing. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm pretty sure it's been really boring, but hey. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye.